having learnt about the basics of dyeing, then taking a look at the typical procedures, recipes of dyeing for cotton and silk, we now move on to the technological upgradations that were required for commercialization and some of the work that was done as a developmental work in feed laboratory IIT Kanpur for dyeing nat with natural dyes. We will talk about this and as we go along, I will emphasize on what was better and what was not so good and what should be taken up by the industry because this technological advance, uh, as advancements are really going to have an impact on the commercialization aspect. So therefore, I mean it is let us now move on from the laboratory scale dyeing to a more uh, you know scientific and commercial dyeing procedures and how the industry should orient itself. Natural dyes in India have been found to be of indigoid, anthroquinone, alpha naphthoquinone, flavones, dihydropyran, anthrocyanidine and carotenoid. These are the various types of dyes which have been isolated and used in India very frequently and several several plants have been identified having indigoid dyes. Similarly, many many plants have been identified having anthroquinone dyes in substantial quantity. Even alpha naphthoquinone dyes were found to be present in many dyes, dye, dye yielding plants. Flavone dyes, dihydropyran, anthrocyanidines are full of the entire uh, seasonal flowers are full of these anthocyanidine dyes. So they can be good source of natural dyes and carotenoid dyes of course carotene is uh, surely obtained from carrots but there are other carrot saffron and anato and many other species which yield substantial amount of the carotenoid dyes. Natural dyes have a certain appeal to the consumer and that is the reason why it has come up with its uh, revival and resurgence. The United States imports some 3500 tons per year of natural dyes representing only 0.4 percent of its dye market. After many decades in which little or no natural dye research took place, technical interest is being rekindled. So for a lot of time when synthetic dyes were in market, the natural dyes went into a shadow. But there is now a great revival and resurgence of natural dyes and this I have been telling repeatedly. The list of natural dyes that was screened recently in feed laboratory IIT Kanpur were from Sapanwood, Bougainvillea, Lac, Balsam, Tulsi, Kana, Sinanaria, Cosmos, Tesu, Pomegranate, Kezia, Tectona, Babul and Eucalyptus and many more. I am just listing a few of them just to make you understand about 64 or more plants have been screened for natural dye yielding plant and they have been shown to have a good industrial application. That kind of technological upgradation on the natural dye front has been done at our laboratory. New techniques that we adapted for dye extraction were mainly based on sonicator and supercritical fluid extraction. I will give you an example, sonicator extraction became imperative and absolutely necessary and out of this necessity we uh, used it for a particular case. I give you an example of wood. You know, whenever it is heated for over a prolonged heating period, sapan wood which gives very bright magenta extract actually deteriorated into dull brown extract and this process on cooling did not revert back the magenta color, so which means that it has called um, the extract has 
become completely discolored and this discoloration was responsible that we try to use a milder method. And so, we found that sonicator was one of the best method for the extraction at room temperature and at ambient temperature and pressure. Because the way it works, it is very, very effective to extract the dye content without destroying the nature or the uh, colored uh, structure. Supercritical fluid extraction we had discussed in great details and this also we used extensively in the case of eucalyptus bark extract. When we make an aqueous extract of the eucalyptus bark, the bark gives brown color as what it would be expected. But when the same bark was uh, put through supercritical fluid extraction that is SCFE, yellow bright yellow color only appeared which is a typical flavonoid moiety. So, that means that in the aqueous extract the flavonoid was getting masked due to these tannins which were brown in color. But at the same time when SCFE extraction was carried out the only the flavonoid was extracted um, uh, uh, only preferentially. That means, it did not touch the tannins, it did not extract and this is the beauty of the extraction process called supercritical fluid extraction that at a particular critical, uh, at a particular temperature and pressure just above the critical temperature and pressure of carbon dioxide, it the liquefied carbon dioxide can act as a very good solvent and can extract preferentially a compound, a type of compound, be it essential oil, be it dye. So, one has to find out a way to do the extraction in a manner which can give the desired product. Sonicator as an essential dye extractor, how does it work and how did we utilize this, how the technological upgradation of using a sonicator in place of co conventional extraction process came into being, what are its positive points, how does it work, we will discuss that. Utilization of ultrasound energy for extraction of dye from plant sources has been brought into practice. It is for the first time that we did it in our laboratory. The sonicator used is of 20 kilohertz frequency which is suitable for inducing cavitation. The cavitation which causes formation and collapse of micro bubbles is very effective in dye extraction of air sensitive, moisture sensitive uh, substrate and air sensitive particularly because under the heating condition if there is excess of oxygen then it will get oxidized to a uh, undesirable discolored uh, component. The micro bubbles which are unstable slowly grow in the process of oscillation, finally implode, generally momentarily yes, localized high pressure and temperature are generated thus helping in extraction. So, the way it happens is through cavitation. And because of cavitation, these are in, uh, there are micro bubbles that are generated. And because of the mi micro bubbles then, uh, you know, colliding with each other, there is a localized temperature and pressure rise, which causes the agitation uh, along with the agitation to help in the extraction process. Accelerated supercritical extraction. With increasing frequency, industry is utilizing supercritical fluids to extract and purify biological act, biologically active compounds, flavors, fragrances and essential oils from both plants and animal sources. This extraction process consi consists of contacting the supercritical fluid that is carbon dioxide and natural product in an extraction vessel at a high pressure where the solubility of the desired product is appreciable in the supercritical fluid 
and only sometimes some ion trainers are added like uh, acetone or methanol or ethyl acetate, but in very small quantity. The beauty of this uh, process is that the liquefied uh, carbon dioxide can be recycled because as a liquefied carbon dioxide, it is a good solvent. But when the gas is rarefied, when the pressure is released, the carbon dioxide naturally wants to be in the gaseous state and therefore, it transforms into gases leaving behind the extractant and uh, that is collected. So, it is the most purified form of extraction, no column chromatography or any other purifying separating devices or procedures are required and hence we try to utilize this as I said in the case of eucalyptus bark because it gave beautiful canary yellow uh, dye which was completely masked or which did not appear at least in the aqueous dyeing which gave only dark brown tannin colors. Supercritical fluid extraction that is SF, uh, SFCE for the extraction utilizes carbon dioxide as bulk extraction media with ethyl acetate and as entrainer in the case of our eucalyptus bark extraction, extraction ca carried out for a eucalyptus bark and tulsi leaves also we tried out and it gave beautiful greenish yellow dye from tulsi leaves. So, for two cases we tried it out. Of course, we did not have the instrumentation in our uh, IIT Kanpur. We had to send it to IIT Bombay where this is available and one can do it on a payment basis. If we try to look at the global scenario, the Indian textile industry has potential for 25 percent of the total export of the country. Collapse of the Soviet market has resulted the US and the European Union to depend on India. They are demanding eco-friendly textiles. The Indian textile industry has to reorient its activity to meet the requirement of the importing countries. You see, we just talked about the eco-friendly tests, how we can ascertain that all the exports that are sent, whether it is dye or dyed fabric from India is eco-friendly. And we saw that four parameters need to be tested. First is the absence of azo dyes, where we test the presence of banned amines. Then the pesticide residues are also analyzed or presence of toxins, heavy metals need to be analyzed. And finally, formaldehyde content in the textile needs to be analyzed. So, we have just learned about that and therefore, you will be able to correlate what I am talking. Technological upgradation, effective and efficient exploitation of new technology will keep us in competitiveness with the world. Why was technological upgradation required? Why did not we just keep on doing the conventional methods? Why was there a necessity to you know? do something new, do something more innovative because we have to keep pace with the advancement that is happening in the developed country. And since we are one of the developing countries, we need to keep pace with this advancement of technology. And therefore, there was a need for technological upgradation. Utilization of ultrasound energy for dyeing cotton with natural dyes is a definitive improvement even in dyeing process. So, we saw that in the extraction process, we added two new methods for the ease of the dyers and similarly, sonicator or ultrasound energy utilization for dyeing was also introduced for natural dyes by us. So, we are trying to bring in technological upgradation in these dyeing processes as well as in the extraction process. The limitations with natural dyes, there is a lack of standardization and I gave a full lecture related to the standardization process of natural dyes. 
that also we have developed in our laboratory. Because of high cost of dyeing, we had to now think of processes which can bring down these costs. So, there is easy and ready, uh, ready availability and their pastel shades. These were some of the limitations. So, can we try to now do an upgradation of technology for either of them or all of them? And the answer is yes, it is possible to do that. Why? Because if we have to bring natural dyes to the market, we have to think of combating all the problems or the limitations that are associated with natural dyes and dyeing. The problem associated with exploration of newer sources of natural dyes are poor R&D on dyeing techniques and dye extraction methodologies, lack of facilities to access latest technologies and market information. So, these were the two main uh, has, uh, you know um, drawbacks or I would say hurdles that was not keeping us have the information as to what is happening in the world around and how are these technologies being applied and can we apply the new technologies on our existing machinery and so on and so forth. And not many uh, you know uh, commercial test uh, dyeing units were using any kind of R and D. So, there was a very poor R and D on the dyeing techniques and dye extraction methodologies. So, we try to look at these problems and see whether we can make any substantial contribution towards the technological upgradation. Advantages of natural dyes, they are obtained from renewable sources, no health hazard, sometimes they act as health care as in the case of Tulsi and we saw in the case of 6 dyes. I took example of 6 dyes uh, to show you that they have immense medicinal properties. Practically no or mild chemical reactions are involved in their preparation, no disposal problem because they are biodegradable and they are harmonized with nature. So, these are the things which we are learning repeatedly. Why? Because we want to see that if it is so, then more and more dyers should be uh, using natural dyes and to be able to make an easy access of natural dyes to these dyers, what is that we can do to facilitate the whole process. The spectrum of colors for natural dyes, red color dye can be uh, or red dye can be obtained from sapan wood and lac. Just in order to give you an idea as to what yields what, of course, we also saw that mordenting can alter completely uh, the color that the dye actually has and this plays a very important role. Not only modern, but even pH can alter the color, uh, hue color. Yellow color can be obtained from bougainvillea, marigold, eucalyptus extracted by SCFE method. Blue dye can be obtained from indigo. Black colored dye can be obtained with lac and some metal mordanting like ferrous sulfate. Brown colored dye can be obtained with sapan wood and balsam. Green colored dye can be obtained from canna, red flowers of canna under a particular pH will give green color on the fabric. Is not that a, um, you know almost like a miracle that you see a red extract, but when the fabric is dyed it is green in color. Tulsi is also uh, because Tulsi leaves itself give green color. So, that is also a source of green dye. Orange peach colored can be obtained from balsam flowers or bougainvillea. So, by using proper mordant and by maintaining the proper pH, the shade can be manipulated. And you will see that the, there is a huge spectrum of color that can be obtained from the same dye. Lac dye can range from gray to red to maroon to purple to violet. So, this is from just one dye, 
and just by proper manipulation of the mordant and by uh, treating with modifiers or by manipulating the pH, one can get a huge spectrum of colors and various various shades can be developed, shade cards are developed so that one can know which recipe will give what kind of color. The newer techniques in dyeing that were tried out in the laboratory were sonicator dyeing that is use of ultrasound energy for the dyeing purpose and we also tried out microwave dyeing. But here this uh, the regular uh, household domestic microwaves also can be used because you know that in microwave the basic principle is the agitation or excitation of water molecule and all the dye solutions are in water. So, even in open microwave vessel one can do microwave dyeing and it is a process which facilitates dye uptake in a much faster manner as compared to conventional dyeing. Sonicator dyeing, in sonicator type of dyeing when all the uh, dye added to the onset of the dye bath, the dye uptake is most rapid at the beginning and then slows down as the process continues. Due to high dye uptake, the effluent is fairly clear, thus least amount of dye is discharged. So, there are two major advantages of sonicator dyeing. One is that it is much faster than the conventional dyeing process and the second is that because the dye uptake due to ultrasound uh, energy agitation is much higher, the dye bath shows a good exhaustion and if, it, if the dye bath dye is taken up by the fabric, obviously the dye bath will have lesser quantity of the dye content and therefore, least quantity will be discharged in the effluent. Dye uptake by ultrasound mechanism, the same cavitation, the formation and collapse of the micro bubble is responsible for the effect. Unstable micro bubbles affect chemical reactions as a result of momentary localized pressure and temperature. Combined effect of the cavitation, compression and rarefraction cause better dye uptake. So, there is a total you know concerted effort of the cavitation of the micro bubbles of the implosion of the micro bubbles and they cause momentarily localized pressure and temperature and that enhances the dye uptake process and is uh, really facilitating the dyeing process. Ultrasound waves Longitudinal waves particle oscillates in a direction parallel to the direction of the propagation of the waves and transverse or shearing waves direction of the particle oscillate in a direction perpendicular to the direction of the wave propagation. So, the way the, so, uh, the ultrasound waves move, they move longitudinally also and they move traversing on the uh, vertical or horizontal uh, scale also and therefore, there is a complete um, you know oscillation agitation which causes the uh, dye uptake to be further facilitated. The cavitation effect occurs at a temperature between 45 to 50 degrees, useful cavitation frequencies are in the range of 5 to 50 kilohertz helps in breaking up the dye aggregates and accelerates the rate if diffusion of dye inside the fabric. So, it you know cavitation effect is actually divided into its four functionality. First thing is it happens at a very not so very high temperature. Normally, we just saw that typical dyeing conventional dyeing processes require 80 degrees heating. Whereas, here we are only maintaining a temperature between 45 to 50 degrees. So, there is one added advantage that unnecessary heat is not required, there is an energy saving factor and the useful 
cavitation frequencies are between 5 to 50 kilohertz. So, a machine of 20 kilohertz does the needful, helps in breaking the dye aggregates. Because these dyes have the tendency to come together and coagulate, this agitation process actually or the frequency or oscillation helps the dye molecules to uh, move uh, away from each other. And thus, it accelerates the rate of diffusion of the dye inside the fabric. And therefore, if there are only smaller molecules, the diffusion into the fabric by capillary action can take place very easily. Now, let us try to look at how the microwave dyeing takes place, because this is also a new technological advancement in the field of dyeing. Model used is microwave digester system MDS, because that was what was available in the laboratory. Aqueous solution or even methanolic solution of the dye is taken up in microwave vessel, which is made out of Teflon. Dyeing time is required only 5 to 10 minutes. Dye uptake is fairly good, but there are certain disadvantages that we found that you know, uh, although it is very fast, but the entire dye is not taken up and therefore, there are some drawbacks with microwave dyeing. pre mordanting fabric treated with mordant before dyeing, post mordanting we just learnt about this when the fabric is treated with mordant after dyeing or simultaneous mordanting when they are added, the mordant and the dye is added together. All three mordanting processes can be done even in the microwave dyeing. But microwave dyeing, as I said, is not very practical for a, you know, a big scale uh, reaction. For smaller fabrics, one can carry out microwave dyeing. So, it has its own limitation. However, simultaneous mordanting was one more method that we tried to promote uh, for the techni technological upgradation. Simultaneous mordanting. In the case of simultaneous mordanting, the final exhaustion of the dye and the rate of the dyeing can be controlled by adding. The dye transfer was thus maintained at a uniform rate. Sonicator provides constant rate of dye transfer. So, in this particular, see what we were trying to aim that we, if we can simplify the process of dyeing, of natural dyeing, it will be of utility for more and more people in the dyeing industry to take up these technologies or to apply. So, one thing that we promoted was that sonicator should be used for extraction of particularly heat sensitive plant material. The second thing that we promoted was the use of sonicator for dyeing, because even big dye baths can be fabricated, where any amount of fabric can be dyed, just by introducing transducers at the base of the dye bath, one can create the same oscillation and the same frequency uh, waves or uh, sound waves can be generated. So, that fabrication is just a matter of getting these transducers fitted at the bottom of the dye bath. So, that was the second upgradation that we suggested. However, we realized that microwave dyeing cannot be suggested to big industrial dyers, because it is not a practical solution that big microwaves are not available. So, those who are into thousands of meters of dyeing cannot find microwave dyeing as a useful method. The third thing that we tried to promote as a technological upgradation process was to promote simultaneous mordanting in sonicator. And that was precisely uh, why we started working on this, that one full step of mordanting and then waiting, pre mordanting and then waiting and then dyeing could be you know uh, mixed with uh, the dyeing process. And if that can be done, 
then definitely in industry there is saving of energy, saving of time and there is saving of money. And so therefore, this process would definitely be a welcoming change for the dyers who are using conventional dyeing. Some of the results of the mordant stannic chloride and dyes are used and are shown in the next slide. Sapanwood, Tulsi, Alkanet, Root, Tuls, uh, Tesu, Pomegranate, Al Root, uh, Eucalyptus. These are a few dyes where you know certain um, um, simultaneously modented fabrics and their results are being shown. The structures of the dyes that were isolated were alkanin and this alkanin you know on oxidation gave different products. So, these are some of the structures of the dyes, fustine, morine were the dyes and lacaic acid from the la these are fastness properties as what we were mentioning. So, if we have to make a comparative uh, study of microwave and sonicator dyeing, you will see that uh, the Tulsi which was carried out with alcoholic solution dyeing shows rubbing fastness of 4 to 5 in both dry and wet of microwave, but the same dye shows 5 and 5 in sonicator. So, uh, it is an obvious choice that for Tulsi dyeing sonicator is the choice. Similarly, you will see that Sapanwood alcoholic, Sapanwood aqueous also has lower values of rubbing fastness as compared to the, I mean if one makes a comparison between microwave and sonicator, the values for sonicators are always high. So, that goes to prove that in some way or the other microwave is little inferior than the sonicator dyed fabric. And the same was observed in the case of washing fastness. You will see that Tulsi, Sapanwood, Alkanet, Al, Eucalyptus all show lower values in the case of microwave dyeing and in the case of sonicator dyeing the washing fastness was better to be with the microwave. Even when we try to look at the fastness properties of Tulsi with stannic, stannous, ferrous and alum both pre and post modented it was found that these are the values which are fairly acceptable because Tulsi was a new dye source and therefore, we were trying to promote Tulsi. Now, promotion of Tulsi as a natural dye also had two aspects. One of course, it is an easy uh, source of dye. It is a plant that can be grown anywhere. The organized farming uh, can be done uh, for Tulsi and secondly, it has lot of medicinal value. So, for uh, surgical purposes, or for uh, hospital use, this Tulsi dyed fabric can be very well accepted because it has my antimicrobial property and those who deal with lot of blood stains and all that can be safely using this Tulsi dyed fabric because it has a pleasing odor as well as a pleasing light green color. Antimicrobial properties were studied in great detail with Tulsi extract. The tensile strength uh, after the soil burial test was before treatment was very poor, after treatment 1 percent was good, 2 percent was found to be very, very good and 5 percent had showed excellent antimicrobial uh, you know property. Similarly, dyeing property also showed that you know it has very good light fastness, wash fastness and rubbing fastness with a modern of course, the properties were much higher or the um, dyeing uh, fastness properties showed pronounced effect whereas, without modern they were certainly the values were lower. Fastness properties of eucalyptus also shows the similar trend that with stannous chloride, with stannous chloride, with ferrous and with stannous different shades of pre and post modenting fabrics could be obtained and the fastness properties like light fastness, wash fastness, rubbing fastness and perspiration fastness was actually evaluated. Why I am giving you all these details because 
for a dye to be accepted in a commercial market unless and until it has good fastness property, it can never come up to the mark for the commercialization process. So, since eucalyptus, yellow dye and tulsi were two new sources, we tried to show that they are having the required stipulated and essential fastness properties to be categorized as good dye sources. If we try to look at the fastness property of the dyed cotton fabric with the supercritical fluid extracted eucalyptus bark that is the yellow canary yellow and if we try to make a comparison between microwave and sonicator, you will see that the sonicators that is the red bar is always longer than the blue bar which represents the microwave. So, only in the case of rubbing fastness that to the wet rubbing fastness they were found to be at par with each other. Otherwise, sonicator was always better and therefore, we came to a conclusion that microwaves are slightly inferior and therefore, sonicator dyeing should be promoted in the industry. Now, having done all that, there was a need to find out whether any of the uh, primary uh, dyed material or the dye is eco-friendly or not. And for testing eco-friendliness, we just did it, uh, uh, the last lecture was dedicated for testing of eco-friendliness. Testing for eco-friendliness of this material could be done uh, by analyzing the presence of heavy metal pes pesticides and banned aryl amines by methods that are described below. Heavy metals were analyzed by inductively coupled plasma spectrometer or atomic absorption spectrometer. Pesticides were analyzed by extraction, cleanup and detection by GC and ECD and band amines were analyzed by the help of uh, HPTLC and GCMS. So, you see that all this effort was mainly to prove that natural dyeing has a great potential and is safe because it normally passes through the eco-friendly test very well. 